Hey there, Sharon Hornells from here. Welcome to day 2048 of What You Up To Now, documenting the journey. Originally, as a transition from the brick and mortar business to the and corporate world of business to the online world of business and back and forth. Today, our idiom is on top of the world, and we're talking about core values, confidence core values for this year's annual challenge, the Get Your Goals annual challenge. And so, my question today is can living our confidence core values put us on top of the world? Can it put you on top of the world? Can it put me on top of the world? And I want to say, yes, I think it can. I think when we're living congruently with who we are and what's really important to us, that can help us to feel successful, to feel inspired, to feel happy, to feel like we're living our true purpose and mission and principles and whatever it is that we define as important for us. Core values, of course, an area, an area or aspect of our life are the principles and the foundation that defines us, defines our self-worth, defines our purpose and whether we're living in alignment and congruently with that or not. I don't know about you, but I've spent times in my life when I was doing what I thought I was supposed to do, living what other people told me I should do, you know, be a good mom, go to college, get a degree, go to work for a big corporation and work there for the rest of your life. And uh, did some of that and realized that some of it absolutely positively was not for me. Uh, I thought it was at the time because I thought I was doing all the things I should be doing to be a good wife and a good mother and a good employee. Uh, and for the most part I was, but there were still parts of it that felt off to me and didn't feel right to me. It's like different industries I've been involved in throughout my life and career. They just felt they didn't give me joy, right? They felt icky or even though I was helping people, the, their situations were so terrible that it just hurt. And that's why I would never be a, a psychologist or psychiatrist. I couldn't do it I, because I maybe have too much empathy or sympathy for people. I don't know. So our idiom today was on top of the world. So I use, of course, one of my granddaughter's books to show the ducks swimming around the world, being on top of the world and shared that that's actually really an ancient idea, an ancient thought that goes back to the belief that the world was flat. And so if you're in a high spot on, on top of the world, you are happy or somehow superior. And it's probably why uh, different things were built up high, right? Think of castles and towers and things like that. People that uh, were higher up on the, uh, the landscape felt that they were somehow superior or more important or happier or whatever. And we talked about how to be the leader in your industry by being the person that you want to be and creating the business you want to create and showing up in the world the way you want to show up in the world to serve the people that you're here to serve. Because we're not here to serve everybody. We're only here to serve a certain group of people that are our people. And I hope that makes sense. It's like we only hang out with certain people because they're our people and they make us feel good You know, in our relationships, in our, our non-business, non-professional life. So the same is true uh, in our business life, right? We want, we're not for everybody. Everybody doesn't love us. I know, shocker, but it's true. <laughs> we all get haters. And I guess when you know that you're on top of the world, it, you're getting both positive and negative feedback from the world, right? People that see what you're doing and don't like it, they don't necessarily like it because they don't like you and it's not necessarily personal. It's because you're a reflection of what's possible for them that they're not doing. And that, that hurts a lot of people's feelings, right? People get envious and jealous when you're doing something that they know they could probably be doing better, but they're not taking action, they're not following up, they're not being true to themselves or for whatever reason, because everybody has reasons for being where they are right now uh, and not doing things that are different. Uh, so our idiom today was on top of the world. And our topic is core values, confidence core values. And we went through a list of, I don't know, probably 20 different possible confidence core values and said, I said, think about these. And as I was going through it and then pick three, what are your three top core values when it comes to confidence? And I picked my three and see the red dots as we were going through the discussion because then I already have my homework done for tomorrow, right? My daily action. And I can think about those three core values today and say, as I go about my day, are those truly ones that make me feel better about myself, feel like my self-worth, my energy, and everything is better because those things are the most important to me when it comes to the area of confidence. Mine were uh, eliminating, overcoming limiting beliefs, embracing change, and continuously learning and growing, of course. Those fall into other areas of my life, but they really, really 
impact my confidence because I know that if I've done something before or something even similar to it before, I can probably successfully pull it off again, right? Oh, probably one of the only people I know that did a, a women's summit in, I think I decided and 30 days later I did the summit, meaning I got 30 plus women to join me in the summit, did the summit, put the summit out there, and I did it for free because I wanted to see if I could do it, but I actually did the whole thing, did all the interviews, and got it out there in like, it was like maybe 45 days, because I think I decided that I spent a week or two saying, okay, I'm gonna do this, and I sent out surveys, got people to say, yes, I wanna be a part of this, and then just did the interviews and the questions, and out it went. And it was most, mostly to prove it to myself that I could do it, right? There's all kinds of people out coaching and teaching how to do that, and I'm like, well, I've done a lot of the components of this. I think I can do it, and so I did it. It's like the reason I launched my my podcast, which is this, which is, you know, it's me. It's not professional. It's not polished. It's just me sharing the lessons that I've learned and, and, and things that I have learned about or my annual challenge, things that I'm doing with other people. And I did that in like a day. I decided, all right, I've been messing around with this stuff long enough. I'm going to figure out how to do a podcast, and I just started doing it and learned as I went along and hopefully I will start to improve it and make it better and better and better and better. Okay, that's it. That's all I've got today. Saturday here in my neck of the woods weekend, busy weekend this weekend. As usual, it's a holiday weekend here in the United States, Labor Day, which is a really interesting holiday for me personally. I seem to have had massive health challenges around Labor Day. So I'm always a little cautious now around Labor Day. I had a sudden cardiac arrest day after Labor Day. Uh, in 2010 prior to that I had kidney surgery and all kinds of crazy stuff so Labor Day is one that I I really take seriously and kind of lay low so if I can help you anyway ask otherwise have an awesome weekend and I will of course be with you tomorrow